Well, good, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Equal Opportunities Committee, 20th meeting of 2014. Uh, please could you set any electronic devices to flight mode or off as it interferes with the electronic equipment here in the Parliament? As the convener is not present today and a new deputy convener has yet to be chosen, I am chairing this part of the meeting as the oldest member of the committee. <laughs> Just the oldest member of the committee. Under Rule 12.1 of Standing Orders, standing orders require the committee must choose a temporary convener for the meeting. Can I therefore seek nominations, please? Can I nominate yourself? Thank um, you very much. Sandra. Thank you. Can I seek the committee's agreement that I am appointed as temporary convener? Agreed. Thank you. Uh, apologies have been received from Margaret McCullough, convener, Alec Johnson, and could I also put on record this committee's thanks to Marco Biagio, uh, who had uh, moved on to greater things, and wish him well in the future in his new role. Agenda item one is a uh, declaration of interest, and in accordance with section three of the Code of Conduct, I am invited to clear any interest relevant to the committee's remit. Uh, I've got no declaration of interest. Agenda item two is a choice of deputy convener. Um, on the 1st of June 2011, the Parliament agreed motion S4M165 that only Scottish National Party members are eligible to be chosen as a deputy convener of the Equal Opportunities Committee. Uh, so therefore, could I now seek nominations? Uh, yes, uh, can I nominate yourself uh, as the deputy convener uh, and welcome you to the committee at the same time as your new member? Could I second you? Thank you very much. And likewise, welcome you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th thank you very much. Uh, as you will note, one nomination has been received, and can I therefore ask the committee to agree that uh, myself, Sandra White, MSP, be chosen as Deputy Convener of the Equal Opportunities Committee. Agreed. Thank you very much. We now go on to agenda item three, and it looks at subordinate legislation. We have three pieces of subordinate legislation today. And the first one is the Civil Partnership Prescribed Bodies Scotland Reg Regulations 2014 SSI 2014 Stroke 303. Uh, the second subordinate legislation is the Same Sex Marriage Prescribed Bodies Scotland Regulations 2014 SSI 2014 Stroke 305. The third one is uh, the Marriage and Civil Partnerships Prescribed Form Scotland Regulations 2014 SSI 2014-306. Uh, the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee are determined that they did not need to draw the instruments to the attention of the Parliament and the Committee can now consider any issues that it wishes to raise in reporting to the Parliament on these instruments. Uh, members should also note that no motions to annul have been received in relation to the instrument. Uh, can I invite comments from any members in regards to the subordinate legislation? Okay, thank you. Uh, so the committee agrees that it does not wish to make any recommendation in relation to these instruments? Thank you. We're now going to agenda item four, and it's discussion and petition PE1372 by Friends of the Earth Scotland on access to justice in environmental matters. Uh, could I just say that taking into account work done by the Justice Committee relevant to this position, petition and correspondence with the Scottish Government, you are asked to consider whether to close the petition or to take another course of action. Uh, you may also note that uh, the Committee has also received last-minute correspondence from Friends of the Earth, Scotland. Uh, members may wish to consider whether they should seek legal advice considering uh, this uh, correspondence on the particular issues which have been raised by Friends of the Earth. I'll just open up to comments. John? Uh, thank you very much, Convener. Uh, convener, th th this is, item seems to have been on the agenda almost since the start of this committee, and, and I, I don't know that we're any further forward with uh, clarity, so I, I think there would be a benefit in, in the suggestion you've made regarding legal advice. Can I draw the committee's attention to two very recent, because in addition to the papers where there's references to uh, occasions where it's been raised, sometimes by myself, um, about um, if I particularly can draw... Uh, put on record the, the issue of the fifth report, uh, the, I beg your pardon, the stage one report in court reform bill, 
when the Justice Committee um, at paragraph 38 said, and I quote, the committee notes the differences between the requirements of the Arhas Convention and the scope of judicial review in Scots law. The committee is sympathetic to calls for the introduction of an environmental tribunal in Scot for Scotland. Um, and more recently, indeed last week, um, during um, questions to the new Cabinet Secretary for Justice, I asked um, uh, on the issue of uh, whether he would undertake to establish an environmental court um, and whether indeed he believed that, that our House Convention was being complied with. And to quote Mr Matheson, I am always open to considering how we can improve access to our justice in an appropriate way. And later on he went on to say, I recognise the importance of having different specialist courts and I am open to considering how specialisation can be continued in the future. In addition to that, and in fact subsequent to that, I have posed a, a question to the Scottish Government and that is uh, question 23460. Um, and that is to ask the Scottish Government what progress it has made on delivering the commitment in the SNP 2011 manifesto regarding an environmental court. So I think particularly with regard to these two live issues, the consideration by the, the Cabinet Secretary for Justice and that question that I've lodged, can I respectfully suggest that we keep the petition open and get some further advice indeed on where we stand with our uh, convention. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, John, I know your particular interest, having been on the Justice Committee, along with John also, I think it's a very good suggestion, along with the legal advice, and probably put it to the committee at the end of the discussions. Uh, Christian and then John. Yeah, thank you, Governor. Yeah, I'm on the Justice Committee as well, and I, I do recall, yes, John, uh, that uh, the committee was sympathetic to, uh, to having a, a special court. There is no time table putting on it. We, we could have put it in the bill to have it to have it straight away, but, you know, the committee didn't push for this. Now, that's one of the points, but it seems to me, as particularly with the last submission, the last minute submission from Scotland, it's very, very clear that uh, uh, we, we still think that the Scottish Government uh, is not uh, bending to the international high risk obligations. But I, I failed to understand this because the last letter from the Cabinet Secretary has been very, very clear. The Scottish Government complies with the high risk uh, Convention and uh, and furthermore, no legal challenge against the Scottish Government made on the grounds of not compliance uh, with the Convention has been successful. So, I, I, is that part I'm, I'm not sure about? You know, how are we not uh, floating a dead horse there trying to, to, to get an answer which we, we have already? So, if that's the main point to keep it open uh, to decide uh, uh, if the Scottish Government is yes or no uh, compliant. I think we've got the answer from the Cabinet Secretary uh, already. So if that's the main point, I have no objection for, for, for it to be closed. John, do you want to make a comment? Yes, I mean, um, if we're going to take legal advice and, and leave it open just now, I'm certainly comfortable uh, with that. And it would be interesting to hear the Cabinet Secretary. I think one of the interest, one of the suggestions was that actually we should have the Cabinet Secretary at the committee and ask him about it. Uh, I don't have a particular problem with that. I think my main point, though, would be just that, I mean, we're, we're talking about access to justice, um, and, and that is not a black and white issue. It's on a scale, and so we're never going to get a yes or no answer. We're, at some stage, somebody's going to have to make a judgment, and as I say, I'm happy that we take more advice on that. But, I mean, you know, I think it's part of a wider issue. I don't think there's good access to justice in this country at all, you know, right across the board. A, you, violate, you know, if you're poor enough, you get legal aid. If you're rich enough, you, you don't need it. Most of the people in the middle don't have access to justice. So... Um, you know, this is not just an issue about the environment. It's a, it's a much wider issue. And uh, I think, you know, what, what I'd, I would not want to see is that environment suddenly gets put to the top of the queue and everybody else doesn't get access to justice. Um, but I, I totally agree with the fact there should be access uh, to justice for environmental matters. I, I think we, we take on board what all three members have said, and I take on board, Christian, what you've said, I think what they've highlighted is the fact that uh, there was a there was a, a court case in Europe, and I don't think it would do us any harm to to get legal seek legal advice in that particular aspect, and in particular jointly with what both Johns have said, uh, I would be assuming that when we get the legal advice, uh, the timescale would be roughly the same time as John would get his answers from uh, the written question that he put in, that we could look at both at the same time. Thank you, Convener. The, the, the expected answer date is the 15th of this month. Um, 
I wonder if I could add, because I don't think there's any conflict between what anyone said, um, but the mere fact that four years on we're still talking about it suggests that there isn't the clarity, and I mean, no one is suggesting, for instance, that the Friends of Earth are doing anything other than acting in good faith. As John says, often these things are matters of opinion. What's obviously best is if we can um, uh, clarify matters without that opinion having to be necessarily given by a court. That's the ideal situation. So um, I, I, I think there is a lack of clarity at the moment, and I think further advice would help us make an appropriate decision. Uh, does the committee agree that we continue with the petition, keep it open until we get the legal advice and obviously uh, the answer to John's question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we now conclude the, the public part of... Uh, the Equal Opportunities Committee, and I will suspend the meeting for the committee to move into private session. Thank you.